Okay, Jennifer's birthday is in a few days. She's over here stitching. She's got a needle in her mouth. Um, I'm gonna give her this card, okay. and she's gonna see it for the first time. And Mike has actually seen it, and you'll know why <gasps> when you. Is it one I've seen in the video? No. No. <gasps> this this includes brand new drawings that are not even a stamp set. They're just drawings. You'll see. Uh oh. Hello everyone, Christina here. We will get back to Jennifer's reaction to this card in a moment when the card is finished. But I wanted to show you how this card was made before we get to that point. So uh, about a week, well, not a week, maybe five days before I left to go on a cruise with Jennifer, I decided I would make her a birthday card. Her birthday happens to fall near the end of the cruise. So I wanted to take the card with me on the cruise and then give it to her. And initially I had planned to hold on to the card until her actual birthday, which is the second to last day of the cruise. But as you'll see here at the end, I was a little excited and I didn't even write in the card before I gave it to her. Anyway, so here's the story behind this card. Um, I wanted to make a card for Jennifer that has two dogs on it that look like her Visla dogs. Um, their names are Abaco and Foxy. And I could not find any physical stamps that a company has put out that look like Vislas. So I went searching on the internet, trying to find some, and the best I could find were some Procreate brushes that were for sale at Etsy. And I'll link to the exact brushes I bought below, but they weren't exactly what I wanted, but I decided, you know, hello, Christina, you illustrate and design stamp sets yourself. You have the skills to do this. So I decided that I would buy the stamps from Etsy. I would modify them a little bit and then use those. So the dog that's on the left is uh, uh, based on that stamp, the digital stamp or digital brush that I bought on Etsy. And then the other dog, the one that's on the right, is actually one where I've changed the dog's expression and it looks a little different. In the middle of all this coloring of the dogs, I texted Jennifer's brother and asked him like, hey, do you have a picture of Abaco and Foxy with their collars? Because I wanted to make sure I color their collars the correct color. And thankfully, he was able to text me back that photo of the dogs. So um, I'm going to be coloring their collars so they match. I'm using Olo markers for all of this coloring, and um, I did a lot of testing trying to pick out the perfect colors that would match a Visla dog. So um, the colors that I used on screen um, were the ones I came up with. And then Jennifer's favorite color is kind of like an aqua blue, kind of tealish color. So I thought I would do these shades of teal for the balloon. And as I colored over the highlight on the balloon with these polka dots, I made sure to use a lighter shade, like that very pale color for the actual highlight area. And then the outside of the highlight is the darker for the polka dots. So this balloon kind of looked like a hot mess for a bit until it didn't. And I'd act, I'm actually really pleased with how it turned out. You notice I colored outside the lines on the balloon and that's because I knew I would be cutting these out. Um, I had planned out the card design on my computer before I printed these out. And the paper I'm using is Expressit paper. I find that Expressit paper works great for Olo markers. So now I'm coloring their collars and it's kind of funny because the the dog that is mostly the magenta color, um, I mix them up. I thought that dog was Abaco, but turns out it's Foxy. Anyway, you'll see here in the end, it works out because Apparently, the little kind of goofy expression on the dog on the right really does look more like Abco or more like Foxy. I mix them up, but it turns out to, it works out in the end. So after I had little blushes on their cheeks, I thought that'd be really cute. Um, then it was time to start cutting out the images. Now, the balloon was very easy to cut out, just kind of like that kind of blobby shape but the dogs were much more difficult to cut out, mostly because of their very, very skinny legs. So I used a craft knife for that. And then cutting it around their skinny, skinny tails. 
And so if a, a version of these dogs ever becomes an actual stamp set, I will make sure that the tails are a little bit more substantial so that those of us who want to fussy cut out the dogs, we don't have to struggle with that, you know, or you could just use the dye and cut it out either way. After I cut them out, I used a brush tip marker just to clean up those edges. It makes it look like everything was cut out perfectly. So that came in clutch for the tails with that t problem cutting out the tail there. And now I'm going to work on the background to go behind the dogs. So I, I thought it'd be kind of fun to have a watercolor background. It would be an opportunity to introduce some more colors, you know, kind of like party birthday colors. So I've taped some Fabriano Artistico extra white watercolor paper to a board. And then I placed my cut images over top just so I could sort of see in my mind where I wanted the background to be. And I also wanted to pick out a stamp set that would go well for the greeting, just a simple happy birthday. So I ended up choosing the Happy Hello stamp set from Simus Stamp. This is a stamp set that I designed a while back. And the little happy birthday greeting was just perfectly sized to go beneath the two dogs. So after I kind of had that figured out, I made some markings on the sides of the masking tape just so it would give me some guidelines for where I want the background to be. I'm using Distress Inks. I've got Distress Mini Ink Pads. Oh, and here's Jennifer texting me in the middle of, <laughs> of painting this. I thought that was cute. Um, so I'm painting the horizon to go behind the dogs. You can see I've made some pencil marks on each side, and that was to guide me to where I wanted to have this background. I'm using the color Hickory Smoke at the moment. And I'm going to hit that with my heat tool so that that's completely dry so I can paint the area above that. So I'm picking out some different colors. I want it to be kind of like a party, really colorful. So I'm using picked raspberry, seedless preserves, mustard seed, ripe persimmon, and crushed olive. And I will also bring in some Mermaid Lagoon uh, up here in a minute, but uh, I just didn't have it picked out right at that moment. So my idea was to kind of have a colorful cloud background behind the dogs. So I'm starting with that picked raspberry, going to mustard seed, a little bit of ripe persimmon. I'm just trying to get some overlapping little cloud shapes. Um, I think this is actually really forgiving for doing a background like this because it's not supposed to look like anything in particular. It's just a colorful background bringing in some of that seedless preserves and then that crushed olive. At this point, I decided that the crushed olive, I wasn't loving it quite as much. So that's when I decided to bring in some Mermaid Lagoon just to sort of uh, make that color a little bit more blue down in that section. So there, there will still be a little bit of that crushed olive peeking through, but I wanted a little more blue. So I dried this, brought the dogs back over, and then I realized that I needed a little more cloud right around that balloon up at the top. So I'm gonna do a second layer and just extend the cloud shapes out just a little bit. And that's essentially all the painting, but I am going to do my favorite trick with Distress Inks, which is spray water into the palm of my hand, flick that water onto the Distress Ink, and then you can pick it up with a paper towel and it gives sort of like a bleached look. It just pulls some of the color out. Distress inks are water reactive, so they're not permanent. So that's what makes this technique work. So I removed the watercolor background from the board. I actually trimmed it down just a tiny bit and then I stamped the greeting in some Versafine Onyx Black ink. And I made sure that was snug in the corner of my Misty in case I needed to stamp twice. And I did actually stamp this twice in the end. So I put some foam tape behind my watercolor panel and then put that onto a five by seven card, just a folded five by seven card. Now, before I can adhere everything to the card front, I wanted to make sure I have the string on the balloon. So I've prepped all of my images with foam tape, including putting very, very skinny little bits of foam tape on the back of the dogs. And I'm placing them onto the card. I'm not gluing them down just yet because I just wanted to get placement 
so then I could add that string onto the card. So that's just kind of sitting on top. And then I took my pencil and I referenced the original balloon image that I printed out. This is just the balloon that I drew for this card specifically. And I wanted, I really loved the shape of that string. So I mimicked the same string shape and then used a Copic multi-liner. This is the 0.3 uh, thickness. And I used that to draw on that string. I thought the, the width of that marker in particular matched the width of the line on the images. So I used an eraser and erased the pencil. And then I started to adhere the images down onto the card. So I first put down the balloon. And then as I adhere the dogs, I'm going to put glue behind their tails because I couldn't get foam tape back there. So as I adhere the, the dogs themselves to the, to the watercolor background, I've got the foam tape everywhere on the dog except the tail. And I've got some a little bit of liquid glue on the tail itself. So the dogs are popped up, but their tails are not, if that makes sense. And that's just because I was worried about um, having such dainty little tails that it would catch on the edge of the envelope or something like that, and then it would tear off. So the card was basically done at this point, but then I decided I wanted to add a, some little sparkles. So I'm using Iridescent Moonshine sequins from Picket Fence. These are my favorite sequins because as you can see, they sort of take on the color that's behind the sequin, but it still provides a little bit of that sparkle. So here is the finished card. I'm gonna hold it up to the camera so you can see it really well. And then we're gonna go right into the rest of Jennifer's reaction, including the reaction of Gran, you know, her, her lovely mother. She's delightful. So here we go. Uh-oh. Oh, I see a dog butt. <laughs> <gasps> oh my gosh, is this gonna be a stamp set? Maybe. <gasps> There's nothing in it. I know I haven't <laughs> written it yet. I told you I haven't written it Look yet. Look at it. Aww. It's Foxy and Abaco. Oh my gosh. That's them. Yeah. Totally them. <laughs> oh, I love it. Thank you. I'll oh. hug you. Okay, you can cuddle me up. Okay. <laughs> Look at my card. Oh my gosh. Look it's, at the collars. It's, it's them. It's your puppies. Look at that, it's the foxy and yeah. it's Abaco. And they're sitting still. <laughs> <laughs> That's not accurate. Okay, sit still. but Abaco has a goofy smile. Yeah. And she looks all oh, prestigious. That's that about is right. absolutely beautiful. How did you do that? She drew them. Oh, it's oh true. my gosh. You have to show Marie. I will. She's a painter. I know. She can paint. Oh, I will show That's her. beautiful. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, that's Yay. beautiful. Mike's wow. seen it. Has he? Yeah. yeah. I texted Mike and I said, what color are their colors? Yeah. And then so she got it just right. Wow. Yep. <laughs>